Hi friends, how are you today? Thank you so much for joining me again sa ating next dose of Bible Chismes on a weekly basis. I'm so sorry I missed last week. Ang daming nangyaring mga hindi inaasahan. Nagre-record na ako and then tapos ko na siyang i-film yung episode ko for episode 7. Tapos biglang sira yung microphone. Ang daming technical problem. Nung sinubukan ko na siyang i-edit, ang hina ng sound. Hindi niyo ako marinig <laughs> na nagsasalita. Wala kayong may intindihan. So, so, na, na down ng aking heart nun. Tapos, I try to record again. Alam niyo yung kailangan ma-meet yung certain time. Kasi ano ka pa, in the mood ka pa. Tapos, bigla namang ba low bat pala yung battery ng camera. O, parang naging against doon sa episode na yon Yung um, filming, yung timing, lahat-lahat. So, hindi ko na siya na-upload on time. And I'd like to apologize for that. Because this should be a weekly upload of Bible cheese means, diba? So we missed one dose. That's okay. Because the Lord, when I missed that, and then I also missed some Wednesday live devotional uh, episodes, um, I kept on asking Him, um, should I still continue? Should I still go on? on doing this. Hanggang sa inasa ko ulit yung story ko dapat for episode 7. And then God introduced another character and He created a curiosity in me about that certain character. And then when I read about that character that I am going to talk about today na lang, hindi na yung isa. I'm like, wow, really Lord? Kaya siguro ayaw niya na ilabas ko yung episode 7 about that guy because the Lord wants me to talk about this amazing incredible woman in the bible so anyway last last week ago uh, we talked about Naaman the leper a general who had leprosy but was healed by god not just the physical ailment that god healed but also the pride that Naaman had he became humble because he dipped in the muddy water seven times and then doon wala yung leprosy niya and then along with the leprosy went with that leprosy, doon sa muddy waters na yun, ay yung pride ni Naaman. He became humbled and he started believing and having faith in the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Moses. It's a wonderful story of redemption. Today, I'm going to talk about a very incredible and amazing woman and mother. I'm going to stress that because in the Old Testament times, women are not really revered so much. Here, she played a very special role, an important role naman in the life of a leader. But more so was what she did after some really downtime moments. And then when I say downtime, as in downtime talaga na lahat. Job level, ganun. Kilala nyo ba si Job? I'm gonna talk about him um, soon as well because he's a special request by someone really close to me. Hi, Mommy Therese! Let me introduce you all to Rizpa. So, si Rizpa, she was the concubine of the late King Saul. Well, lahat sila late na, pero as in, you know, de dearly departed. There came a time when there was a great famine in the land of Israel. The famine happened because King Saul, he broke, he broke a promise to the Gibeonites. So let's go back. Back in the book of Joshua, Joshua was the leader after Moses. Back in the you know days of Joshua, there were the Gibeonites. The Lord is giving victory for Israel. And dami nilang natatalong mga tribes because yung mga tribes na yon, um, it's like the, it's stopping them from going to the promised land that the Lord promised for them. Marami silang mga armies na natalo. The Gibeonites, they are from the mountains. And maliit lang silang group. And they were so scared of the Israelites that sabi nila, Uy, sige tara, mag -ano tayo, magpanggap na lang tayo na we believe in their God para mas fair tayo. So, ganun nga ang, ang nangyari. Nagpanggap sila, na hindi sila from within the, you know, enemy tribes. So, hindi sila ginera ngayon nila, nila Joshua ng mga Israelites. And Joshua made a pact, made a covenant. Sabi ni Joshua, sige, you're one of us now. You're safe. What happens to us happens to you. So if we are blessed, you will be blessed too. And Joshua made that covenant in the name of God. And you know, when you make a promise, when you make a covenant uh, in the name of God, a promise that must not be broken. Kinabukasan, inami ng mga Gibeonites na, hey, ayaw lang namin na mapatayin ninyo kami because we've seen how you 
conquered everyone else. Kami malit lang kami. So in amin namin na we tricked you because we we don't want to die. And Joshua was very upset about this. Pero wala na siyang magawa kasi give you nicer now one of them. That is very important because yung mga covenant na ginawa in the name of the Lord, it's very sacred. It must be honored all the time. The Gibeonites were saved. They're very lucky to be, to be alive. But Joshua made them like, you know, the servant people na lang of, of the Israelites because of the trick that they played uh, on the Israelites. So, many, many years later, centuries later, dumating na ito sila. So, the Gibeonites became like a, they're like a minority. The, the Israelite, pinamumunuan itong si Saul. No joke siya. No, just to please the people, Saul killed the Gibeonites. And that is breach of the promise. When the Gibeonites were killed by Saul, famine started. When we say famine, drought. There's no rain. You know, um, Israel back then, it's it's a, you know, it's a desert. And very important ang rain para tumubo. Yung mga pananim nila. Parang buhay sila. So for three years, nagkaroon ng famine. We're on the ECQ. Nar naranasan natin in, in a few months time na limited tayo sa resources. It's very difficult. Diba? Nahirapan tayo nung panahon na yun. Pero, when we say famine, nung panahon nila, as in wala talaga. Or very scarce ang tubig. Walang pagkain. Hindi ka makapagtanim. Um, yung mga animals mo, unti-unti nga mamatay because wala nga tubig, wala silang makain din. Yung mga karatig country ninyo na magbebenta sa inyo ng mga products nila, yung pagkakakitaan ka talaga ng husto. Whatever they have left na na-save, definitely, they will run out. Saul died in battle. May tatlong anak rin si Saul, si Jonathan, si Abinadab, and si Mechisola, Mephisola. They died in battle together with Saul. Yung mga kalaban nila, kinuha yung mga kat yung katawan ni Saul and yung katawan ni Jonathan, and they were um, hung on a tree. Much like crucified. And that's very important, kasi um, crucifixion is a sign of showing the people na you are damned. You're condemned. You are no longer under the mercy of God. You stay there on the, on the tree and your body will be fed to the um, beast of the air and beast of the land. So, mga vultures, mga jackals, yan. Kakainin nila yung katawan mo. And that's a very symbolic, it's very spiritual because yung pagkain ng mga vultures sa katawan mo while you're hanging there on the tree is very symbolic of hindi ka na mara-resurrect. Diba ang promise ni Lord sa atin? Um, he will resurrect all of us. We will be born again and we will go to his kingdom with him after our earthly body dies. Diba? But if your body is eaten by beasts, then there is no redemption anymore for you. You will be forever damned in hell. So it's like, alam mo yun, yung mga vultures, parang ano sila, mga kampo ni Satan, na pukunin yung soul mo and no escape you will be in hell forever it's very symbolic uh, symbolic that way itong si Saul meron siyang concubine si Rizpah because of what Saul did the Gibeonites demanded of David kasi nagtanong na si David eh, Lord what's going on bakit for 3 years nagkakaroon kami ng ganitong klase ng famine David is known for being the man after God's heart because he always seeks God he tries to, to have a, a heart like God. Mini David, Lord, hindi naman ganito yung promise mo, di ba? Why, why is this going on? Bakit, bakit nagkakaganito? Sinabi nga ni Lord na si Saul talaga merong brinake na promise. I think that's also one of the reasons why God allowed Saul's body to be hanged on a tree. And also Jonathan. Wala siyang pake doon sa mga promises na ganyan. So, God allowed his body to be eaten by beasts or that's damning for him in hell. And so, David asked, what can we do para matigil na tong lahat? You know, the Gibeonites demanded, we want seven of Saul's sons to be crucified, to be hung on a tree, a sacrifice for the Lord, for like atonement. If mamamatay yung mga anak ni Saul, yung mga sons ni Saul, and that's, that's also very symbolic kasi ibig sabihin, parang yung bloodline ni Saul mababawasan or mawawala pa unti-unti because seven sons niya mawawala. Um, Saul had um, four sons with the first wife, Ahinoam, 
and then two sons kay Riz pa. Tong tatlong anak ni um, Saul kay Ahinuam, si Jonathan Abinadab, and si Methisola, namatay sa war. And then yung pang-apat na son ni Saul kay Ahinuam, si Ishbosheth, um, pinatay naman ng, isa, ng dalawang captains ni, um, ni Abner. So I'm going to just read um, a short passage from the book of 2 Samuel chapter 21 verse 3 onward. So um, David asked the Gibeonites, what shall I do for you? How shall I make amends so that you will bless the Lord's inheritance? Um, the Gibeonites answered him, We have no right to demand silver or gold from Saul um, or his family, nor do we have the right to put anyone in Israel to death. What do you want me to do for you? David asked. They answered the king, As for the man who destroyed us and plotted against us, so that we have been decimated and have no place anywhere in Israel. Let seven of his male descendants be given to us to be killed and exposed before the Lord at Gibeah of Saul, the Lord's chosen one. So the king said, I will give them to you. On verse 7 naman, the king spared Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul. So si Jonathan, uh, may anak, si Mephibosheth. So he was spared, kasi descendant siya ni Saul, eh, ba? Because of the oath before the Lord between David and Jonathan, son of Saul. But the king took, ito, si Armoni and Mephibosheth, the son, the two sons of Ayas' daughter Rizpah, whom she had borne to Saul together with the five sons of Saul's daughter Merab. Ah, apo na, kasi anak ni Merab. So si Merab ay anak ni Saul. Um, Merab, whom she had born to Adriel, son of Barzillai, Meholathite. Meholathite. So, si Rizpa, the daughter of Aya, um, she saw what happened to two of her sons, si Armoni and Mephibosheth. They were crucified together with five of her other nephews. That's a very sickening sight for a mother. Okay? Na makita mo yung mga anak mo ay pinako sa krus. Just like what happened to Mary um, when Jesus was crucified. Yung suffering nung anak niya bago ipinako sa krus. Um, same thing happened to these two sons of Saul and yung mga um, apo ni Saul. This is again very symbolic kasi kapag ikaw ipinako ka sa krus, you are damned and you are bound for hell. Uh, you know, when the vultures start to eat you up or your flesh and the jackals, you know, the beast of the land will try to eat you up as well. It's like the angels of death, the angels of Satan eating your soul up piece by piece so that hindi ka na resurrect and hindi ka na kasama ni Lord sa heaven. Now, Rizpa, the kind of mother, the kind of heart that she has for her sons. She took a sackcloth. Okay, now, ang sackcloth kasi, it's um, symbolic of um, repentance, um, paghingi ng tawad, um, mourning. Um, Rizpa, daughter of Aya, this is verse 10, took sackcloth and spread it out for herself on a rock. So, the her, her sons were crucified sa isang, um, sa isang bundok. Rocky Mountain. Um, and then from the beginning of the harvest till the rain poured down from the heavens on the bodies, she did not let the birds of the air touch them day by day or the wild animals by night. So it's just one one verse. Eh? One sentence lang siya dun eh. And let me, let me make that deeper for you. Hi guys, magic na biglang. <laughs> Nagiba yung background ko. May natulog kasi dun sa, sa room. So I have to change studio snacks. Okay, so um, going back sa ating kwento with Rispa, she witnessed how um, her two sons, Armoni and Mephibosheth, were tortured and then crucified. And again, di ba yung ibig sabihin kasi ng crucifixion is damnation. Uh, where you will be uh, subject to hell um, because of the sins, because of your sins. Um, in this case, though, 
because of the sin of their father Saul, yung descendants ni Saul ang nagsuffer. That's how how deep yung galit ni Lord when it comes to someone breaking that very sacred covenant, that very sacred promise. Now, itong series pa, she stayed doon sa mountain kung saan na-crucify yung mga anak niya from the start of the harvest, barley harvest. Kasi yung land na yun, it's very sensitive. Sensitive in terms of sins. Um, if you can remember nung times, the periods prior, um, if the people are sinning, God will not let rain to pour down on their land. And hindi sila magkakaroon ng, ng rain. Therefore, walang mas, wala silang makakain. Yung kabuhayan nila will depend on how they act um, and how they live up to God's laws. Si David, ang gusto lang naman talaga ni David kasi um, matigil na yung famine. Okay. He let this happen, this gruesome thing, um, to, you know, happen para ma-absolve yung sins na ginawa ni Saul and yung mga tao ay hindi na mag-suffer anymore uh, from the famine. But Rizpa, she stayed doon sa mountain since the start of the barley harvest. That's in April. And she stayed there for days and nights days and nights, days and nights para i-drive away yung mga vultures na kakain doon sa, sa mga katawan ng anak niya. Kasi um, when someone is crucified, they are left there hanging para mapakain nga doon sa mga vultures and sa mga jackals, sa mga beasts of the land. For someone na hindi nagkasala, then you will definitely be buried because um, it's very traditional that you know, people will be resurrected after their bodies, their earthly bodies die because they will be resurrected together with Christ. But in this case, if if your body is, you know, eaten by beasts and left there to die, then, you know, parts of you be taken to hell. Like, alam niyo yun, um, slowly snatched away from the grasp of the Father, from the grasp of God, and you will be forever damned. And hindi papayag si Rizba na mangyari yun sa mga anak niya. So for days, for nights, for months, she stayed there sa mountain na yun, driving off vultures in the day and driving off jackals at night para walang kumain doon sa mga naaagnas na katawan ng mga anak niya. Sa cemetery, yung mga patay natin, they're buried. But in this case, kay Rizpa, yung katawan ng mga anak niyang namatay na, they are left there to hang and imagine yung amoy nun, yung amoy ng decaying flesh, yung, yung itsura ng naaagnas na mga katawan. Imagine the things that she endured. Ano yung pinakain niya dun? Malamig, paggabi. Tiniis niya lahat yun because hindi siya papayag na yung mga anak niya ay masnatch away from the hands of God. That's how driven she is. She is driven by so much love for her children na hindi siya papayag na snatch away yung mga anak niya from her, from the loving hands of God, and be snatched into hell. Alam niyo yung ganong dedication? I bet you, as a mom, as a dad, as a parent, hindi niyo hahayaan na masnatch away ng sinful things ng kahit na sino yung mga anak niyo, no matter how difficult it is, because you know it's gonna be worth it makes me teary -eyed. I am so reminded by what Jesus did on the cross for us. By what God the Father did, He sacrificed Jesus para hindi natin maranasan makondem in hell. That's how great, that's how powerful yung love ni Rizpa para sa mga anak niya. And God saw that. God saw what Rizpa did. The start of the harvest 
until dumating yung rain. Because there was famine, we wala walang rain eh. You know, after seven months, dumating yung rain. Seven, the number seven is very symbolic because it's like in a complete circle. Seven sons, seven descendants of Saul were hanged. But Rizpa protected their bodies for seven months. Rain came. So God saw the dedication of Rizpa. In the end, God, with his merciful heart, you know, God's heart is very just. Gusto niyang, um, pag sinabi niyang ganito dapat, he wants to discipline us. And he wants us to obey what he wants. If you disobey, then this is what you get. This is your punishment. And he saw Rizpa, how much she repented, how much she showed her dedication. Can you imagine that seven months? Nakita mo yung katawan mga anak mo naaagnas. And for days and days and nights, nilalabanan mo yung mga vulture, yung mga jackals para hindi ka in. Can you imagine the bravery, the courage? Malamig doon, ma madilim paggabi. You know, that dedication, that much love. Wow. As in, wow. And I bet you, as a parent, will do that too. Because you know, it's worth it. Um, Rizpa showed her dedication and God finally stopped the famine and the rain poured. And David found out about this, about what Rizpa did. He said, Sige, kunin rin natin yung katawan ni Saul and yung katawan ni Jonathan na they did this in secret, ha? Binaba nila yung katawan ni Jonathan and ni Saul from the tree because nakakahang din yung katawan nila from the tree. And they gave them proper burials. The bones of Jonathan and the bones of Saul were properly buried after that um, because of what Rizba did. He heard of her dedication, her love, her sacrifices for her children. Um, and that's what happened. So, Rizpa, after seven months, finally she can rest. Finally, she can stop worrying about her children being damned to hell. Because at last, God heard, God saw her sacrifice. God saw how much she repented. And rain came. Going to today's times, I am so sure that you as a parent will also not stop. You'll also be this vigilant as Rizba. We will be as vigilant as Rizba to, you know, stay days and nights driving away bad persons, bad, bad things to go near our children. Parang yung mga vultures at yung mga jackals. Hindi natin hahayaan na may masama mangyari sa mga anak natin, di ba? And this is a wake-up call to all of us and as early as now let's believe in the power of Jesus Christ in the power of the Lord after all these are done those who believe in Jesus will be saved so be vigilant today I challenge you be vigilant today introduce Jesus to your family to your children to your husband to your wives to your whole family to the people that you care about the people that you love you don't want them to be condemned in hell because hell hindi siya magandang place for our souls but our souls since we are created in the likeness of god we deserve to be with him in paradise let's be vigilant let's all protect our children at all costs sama sama tayo na makasama si Jesus sa kanyang kingdom after our earthly bodies die. So, that's my prayer. And, you know, um, this is really impacting me in so many ways. I was really touched by how, how, how brave she is driving away those beasts, those animals. Hindi siya natakot na baka siya rin yung kagatin eh. Um, hindi siya natakot. What, hindi niya ininda actually. I, I bet she was scared. I bet gusto na niyang gumivap gusto na niyang umuwi but the thought of um, having her children be damned to hell 
if yung mga beasts na yun ay makain yung katawan ng mga anak niya na na-crucify. Hindi niya kaya. She cannot live with that. And I'm sure we will not be able to live with that too. So, right now, let's all be vigilant. As Rizba, let this love from God drive us para i-mold natin yung mga anak natin to be Christ-like. And that's the really wonderful story of Rizba. Amazing courage, actually, as a mom, as a woman, who really showed how much she repented and how much she loved her children to the end. She she made sure of that. I hope and I really pray that we become vigilant as there is making sure that our families and the people that we care about, our loved ones, will live um, and be Christ-like. So, I want to thank you all so much for being with me today, this lovely Saturday. I love and appreciate you all so much. See you again next Saturday, okay? And by the way, on Wednesday also, uh, I will be doing a live devotional on my Instagram around 4 p.m. on Wednesdays. So, I'll see you there. Choose to be kind, choose to love, and best of all, God loves you so very much. See you again next Saturday. Bye!